you know, coming into April of 1994, the Observer is discussing the steroid trial, which is about to start. Dad, as I was reading through all of this information, I saw where this was reported, and it really stuck out as something I, I could ask you about. The most well-known, but not the only distributor to WWF wrestlers and a few wrestlers from the other organizations as well during that time period was Dr. George Zahorian, who was convicted on eight counts of illegal steroid distribution and four more counts of other controlled substance distribution in 1991. Zahorian has spent most of the period since the trial in prison. Zahorian also supplied steroids to McMahon, so if nothing else, McMahon must have had knowledge of what Zahorian was doing as it pertains to his wrestlers since he was purchasing them himself. Zahorian, in the mid-1980s, would, according to trial testimony, set up shop backstage at WWF house shows in western Pennsylvania and routinely distribute various kinds of drugs, including steroids, to wrestlers. So holy smokes, man, this is a doctor that was backstage and I'm certain was around you a time or two, and now he's in prison. And holy, it seems like the bottom is about to fall out for Vince McMahon the WWF. So I wanted to ask you, allegedly, he's openly distributing drugs behind the scenes during this period. Uh, it's 30 years later, so I don't expect you to remember specific details. But do you recall seeing Dr. Zahorian behind the scenes? Uh, yeah, I saw him. Uh, but I personally, I, you know, I didn't deal with him. I, I'm not, I wasn't going to go there. And so, you know, I don't believe he's ever sold anything to me. I mean, and I, you know, I didn't do drugs. I mean, it's kind of like, uh, you know, I mean, uh, I mean, I, I guess and he was supplying steroids as well, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, uh, look at my body. Do I do I look like a muscled up geek? No, <laughs> I never did. I, you know, I, I, you know, I was always in shape. You know, and uh, but I just, you know, and and, I, and again, I've never. I've had never had huge arms or whatever. You know, I had good shoulders and triceps and a, you know, and a pretty good chest. It was kind of like I didn't want to look like a a a, a, a dang uh, bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. you know, that's not wrestling. And of course, you know, I'm sure Vince would have liked it better if, if I had looked a little more like a bodybuilder. But I had no interest. I really had no interest in looking like that. Yeah, and, you know, you didn't need to. Uh, Jake didn't need to. Jim Duggan, who we were just talking about, Jim was fit, but he wasn't, you know, this. Uh, he didn't look like, you know, skin yeah. stretched over cinder blocks like some of these guys. Right. Like, right. you know, uh, it's it's fine to not be this big, muscled-up kind of a freak, even though that's sort of the look that Vince McMahon was, was marketing at the time. Yeah. And, uh, man, do, do you recall seeing him selling stuff to people? I know I can't, you know, I can't ever say that I openly saw him, you know, uh, I mean, most of it, you know, it's not like I, you know, it's not like he walked in the dressing room, you know, he would, you know, he would show up, you know, you'd see him there and he would go do business with whoever, you know, whether it was under the bleachers or, you know, you know, out, out back in the parking lot or whatever. I don't know. And I didn't care. That's that's how you stay out of trouble, boys and girls. Stay the hell away from <laughs> yeah. that scene. Yeah, that's right. Um, man, steroids in professional and rather steroids in professional sports like baseball or football would clearly present an unfair advantage. But in wrestling, uh, it is you know it's performance based, predetermined, and everybody is well aware of that nowadays. So, in your opinion, Ted, if wrestlers want to use steroids, should they be allowed to to enhance their body, speed up recovery, etc.? Yeah, what I would say is, if you're going to do it, do it under a, a doctor's supervision, mm -hmm. and you know, and I, and that's one of the things when I signed on with Vince, you know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, again, I didn't have, you know, I've always, I, you know, I tell everybody, you know, you know, even when I was working out, and and, and you know, I always had buggy whip arms, man. <laughs> it's like I, I could never get the big guns, and. Uh, but again, you know, I would just, I always would advise you to do it under his doctor's supervision. And that's what I did. I mean, Vince, when we, when he signed me, he says, we're really looking forward to what we can do with you, Ted. He says, but I, I do want you, uh, I want to see you in the gym. And I said, well, you will. And, and I, and I did. And, um, you know, I was always afraid of steroids. You know, I, I, you know, I, again, at home, I you know, went to my doctor and, and talked about it, you know, and, 
it's kind of like, I'll be honest with you right now. Um, I go to this, um, uh, it's a place out in, uh, in, in North Jackson and it's, it's called the men's clinic and it's, you know, all kinds of, you know, and they go in there, they take your blood pressure, uh, that they, they draw blood and, and see where you're at and all that stuff. And I take, and they give me four, uh, uh, syringes, you know, uh, you know, okay. And each syringe has like a, a, a CC, I think it's one CC of testosterone in it. And so I take that, I take that one shot a week. Uh, and, but that's totally under a doctor's supervision. And it's, and it's not for, it's not for bodybuilding. It's just like for male maintenance. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You get your T levels where they're supposed to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep everything else level. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out again to Blue Chew. Um, so, Ted, it makes me wonder, you know, you said that Vince approached you, uh, you know, about hitting the gym a little bit more often. Uh, we can go on record right now. It's all these years later. Uh, did Vince specifically tell you that maybe you should uh, consider steroids? Never. 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 No. So, I mean, you know, the, at the time they would have it in court that it was like, you know, McMahon is just peddling this to the wrestlers and he's in on it with Zahorian and it's this whole thing. And it's, it doesn't sound like he was trying to cram it down anybody's throat. I don't think so. No. I mean, uh, I, and, and it's Zahorian. I mean, I, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. I mean, if the guy was there, I would guess that Vince would have to know that if somebody's hanging around with the wrestlers and, and and selling stuff. So it's kind of like, uh, it's like maybe, uh, Vince intentionally looked the other way. I don't know. I mean, really you no. Know, as you're, as you're saying that, uh, it's, it's reminding me that on our WrestleMania five episode, we talked about how Vince openly stated that professional wrestling is worked fake. Um, so that he could avoid having to pay for a ringside doctor in some of these venues that he was working at. So Vince was not especially fond of the idea of having a doctor in the building that he had to pay for the presence of. So yeah. like, if, if Zahorian is there, I would guess that Vince McMahon wasn't looking to pay him. Uh, so yeah. it's not yeah. like he brought him in to be a medical advisor. So no. what was that guy doing there? Yeah. No, I mean, you know, he was probably, you know, somebody, is, he had to be a contact for somebody. I mean, we did have a bunch of muscle heads in the WWE mm -hmm. back then. And, uh, you know, and they were getting their stuff from somebody. So it's, it's like, you know, if the, who, somebody's somebody would say, okay, well, you know what? There's a bunch of other guys that, you know, that, that I'm wrestling with that would probably be interested in what you're selling. It could happen that way to where the guy is, oh gosh, you know, and I got to, now I'm going now I'm to go sell to a bunch of wrestlers, you know, but I, I mean, uh, Marcus, I'm, uh, God's honest truth. I have no idea because I stayed totally clear of that crap. It's funny whenever we do these podcasts uh, and I ask you about like something controversial or something awful that happened behind the scenes during the time you, you were you were showing up. You were seriously the guy that just showed up at the building. You did your job and you got out. It wasn't you were you weren't playing the politics game or anything like that. And that's why you you know having a long career in wrestling, a decades long career, it's difficult to do. If you yeah. look at most of the guys, most of them don't do it. You did, and I think a big part of that is that you knew when to keep your nose out of, out of stuff. Like yeah. That. Yep. 